Ryan, huge congratulations. A seesaw game. It went one way, the next it was in your hands, then it wasn't. Yeah. What are the emotions like right now? Yeah, um, obviously I'm relieved to get through because I think if I had lost that, I would have felt like it was a big opportunity missed. Uh, I know Nathan's a fantastic player and he can play better than he did today. So I thought, what a great opportunity missed if I hadn't got over the line. But fortunately, give us enough chances to get there. When you had the match in the palm of your hands and you've missed the, the big number to give yourself that opportunity, did that affect you for a while afterwards? No, not really. I, I mean, you're under enough pressure as it is. I, I was already under maximum pressure, so you can't go any higher than that. So uh, it just felt the same. Starting the next leg after missing that chance, it just felt like the same amount of pressure as every other leg. On comms, Glenn Barron called you brilliant, lazy, all at the sa all at the same time. He says yeah. he's frustrated as your friend that maybe you don't take the game as seriously as, as as what you should. How can you put that right and go to the next level? Because we can see what you can produce. Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's a question for philosophers, isn't it? How do you change your personality? Uh, that's just the way I am. So, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think I'll ever change, but I really enjoy playing, so I'll try and play as long as possible. Do you think you can get to the point, though, where you can go and play in all these European tournaments as well? So we've seen you pull out of some, and your ranking could be even higher than what it is now. Uh, yeah, it's just... Um, Anybody that's watching or listening that doesn't like flying can understand that it's a re really difficult uh, trip for me, having to get two flights to get to a European tour as most of the time. Living in Newcastle, it's difficult. And um, sometimes, I, I don't know, just, it just seems easier just not to go and just play on the pro tours in this country. Um, I just don't like flying at all. If I could get the train everywhere, I'd go to all of them, but it's just too, it takes too long. Back to this. Now that you're into the quarterfinals, you see this as a huge opportunity for you now in a tournament that you love. Yeah, absolutely. This is where this is where I always wanted to be in, in the business end of this particular major above all others because I just feel good at playing in it. I, I know any neutral fan watching watching the first two rounds will probably say we I mean, haven't played that good, you know. But I don't know. It's like it. It's like, Psychologically, um, having that the be a good mentality coming into tournaments is everything for a professional player, um, and I just feel good playing in this one for some reason. Ryan, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Ryan, were, were there a couple of times that you feared you'd maybe blown it at the end, then missing the big twenty? Then oh, into the oh every time you leave a top player like Nathan Asman a finish, any finish, you think oh, this this is going to go out. I mean, I, I remember playing the last Euro Tour I played. Um, I left myself on a. 81 or something like that and I'm playing Luke Humphreys at 5-5 five five and he takes out a big finish I think it was 149 and it's happened so often because these players you're up against are real real quality even under pressure in big on the stage they can still do it so you always think the worst but um, I, it's, it's really hard to play against players like that you're renowned as a really efficient double hitter, particularly double 16. Do you feel yeah. like this is an event that really plays into your hands? I, I do, yeah, I really do. I did before the tournament, but um, I think the way I've played in the first two games, I don't feel like <laughs> I don't feel like I've uh, shown that yet. But hopefully, it'll come in the next game. Really important win tonight, not just in the context of, context of this tournament, but puts you back in the top 32. Were you aware of that before? When you say back in the top 32, I've never been in the top 32. So, so this is the first landmark, time. Yeah, landmark moment. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know whether that's good or bad thing. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I don't look at the rankings. I don't look at the prize money and things like that. I just try and just concentrate on one dot at the time, really. Ryan, does it feel like you've overcome the odds a bit tonight? I know speaking to Nathan after his first round win, he felt like it was a, a reasonably kind draw against yourself. But obviously, you proved otherwise. Yeah, um, I think a lot of players in the past have thought it was a kind draw playing me, but I don't know. Um, I've got I've got a really good record against the players ranked above me in the world, and I've got a not a very good record against players ranked below. I I don't know how you can maybe I need to speak to a sports psychologist or something about it, but I'm a really dangerous player for any of the top players to play, and. Any of them, ask any of them, I've beat them all and I've beat them all comfortably before. And that's 
that's why I feel confident that I can win this competition. Talk about being in the top 32 for the first time, the sort of doors that does unlock being a seed at the World Championships obviously gets you closer to being in some of the other major events. Yeah. All things pushing forward in your career. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I've been in the PC for eight years now and I've never been in the top 32, so it's like it's going to be new for us, so I don't really know what to say about it until I've experienced the benefits of what, what it can bring, you know. Okay, cheers. Right, when people say that the scratch was an easy draw, do you take that personally? Does that, does that give you motivation to, to kick it and beat them even more? No, not at all. Um, just when I go up and play, particularly on the stage, it's so difficult. You're under massive pressure. Uh, the whole crowd was against me tonight playing Nathan Aspinall, and you just got to throw one dart at a time. Trust, trust the practice you put in, and trust in your technique, and just try, just try and relax and enjoy the experience. Um, thinking about anything else is just stupid to tune a game like that. Um, I don't know. Anything that anybody says, I don't really pay any attention to it. I'm probably too lazy to <laughs> pay any attention to it. I just don't care. <laughs> Last year in Minehead, you made the final four quarterfinals this week. Where is the belief in your game? How far do you think you can go? What do you think you can achieve in darts? I don't know. Um, for me, it's... My game is all on the day, it's all on the on the hour and on the minute. Sometimes uh, in the Players' Championship, for example, last week, I averaged 112 one game and then just 20 minutes later, I'm back into the 80s average. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's a conundrum. I, I'm sure I'm, every professional in the world would love to know the answer to that question. How do you how do you stay at your top level all the time? It's really tough. I, maybe I could practice more, I don't know. Ryan, best of luck in the next round. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ryan, if I could just touch back on the fear of flying, what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Obviously, with the darts is a global sport now. Like, are you actively speaking to someone to try and help that prevention? Or? Not at the moment. Only because uh, the furthest you have to travel is only like maybe the Czech Republic or Hungary or somewhere like that. Uh, it's only maybe two hours on a plane. It's not too bad. I mean, if I if I if I ever did get to the point where I was picked for a World Series event, for example, in America or or um, Australia, maybe I would have to something I'd have to consider. Yeah, yeah. I mean, t touch wood, it goes your way this week. Obviously, if you're a, if you're a major winner, you win the Grand Slam, uh, sorry, the Grand Prix, that will open so many more avenues for you. So, how well, would you approach that? <laughs> I don't know. Like I say, that, that you're talking about something that's completely new to me. I've never been in the position before, so I just. Um, like anything in life, you just uh, when I, whatever comes at you, you deal with it on the day when it happens. You know, I don't. So I haven't actually planned anything or thought about it yet. Oh, thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Cheers.